If we are talking about restaurants, two of the biggest expenses that owners watch are how much they pay for ingredients and how much they're going to charge you to eat them. Chances are, if the first cost goes up, so will the second. Alan Chernoff checks out a pizza joint to see why the price of dough is rising so high. That's too much. $37, I can't believe it. Gold medal brand flour seems more golden than ever to pizzeria owner Joe Vicari. <laughs> yes. Uh, like it's like a god, yes. The pizza dough that Joe and his temporary apprentice need is suddenly more precious than ever because the flour from which it's made now costs $37 for a 50 pound bag, a price that has more than doubled in the past month. I can't even believe how much you go up with the flour. I, when I see the bill, I can't believe it. That's too much money. Bacardi raised the price of a slice up to $2.50 earlier this year after the cost of cheese jumped. If flour keeps climbing, Joe says, he'll have to hike it again. Over here, people are coming to buy pizza. I mean, working people. How much are you going to raise the pizza now? The flour will go up to over $40, and then I have to raise. Prices for all kinds of baked goods are going to be heading up, and that's all because of the rapid rise in the cost of a bag of flour, which is the result of wheat trading near an all-time high. The price of wheat is now two and a half times what it was just a year ago. Why? Huge demand for ethanol has farmers planting more corn to produce the fuel when they could be growing wheat. And the dollar sinking to a record low is making U.S. wheat relatively cheap for foreigners. As a result, nearly 60 percent of the wheat harvested last year is being exported, leaving wheat supplies here at the lowest level since the end of World War II. Another factor pushing prices skyward. It's killing us. It's killing us. It's so bakery owner Frank Corrales plans to raise the price of every item on his menu next week. Someone's going to come in here and buy a croissant for $2 and tomorrow they're going to be paying $2.50 for it. Well, they're not going to like that. So if you've been thinking about going on a low-carb diet, this might be a very good time to try it out. Alan Chernoff, CNN, New York. The dead zone, it's an environmental hazard affecting those who make their living on the Gulf of Mexico and the rest of us who enjoy eating their catch. CNN's Alan Chernoff reports. Louisiana fisherman Terry Pisani looks across the water with a sense of loss. What used to be the best fishing grounds in the Gulf of Mexico, he says, are barren. You don't see nothing, and usually you see bait fish on the water. You don't see no bait fish and nothing. Nothing's there. I don't have no kind of testing material to test the water, but I know something's wrong. This is the test. 35 miles into the Gulf of Mexico, oceanographers sample water deep below. This sensor measures the oxygen level in the water. The deeper it goes, the less oxygen it finds. And in this part of the Gulf of Mexico, there's virtually none at the bottom. We're not finding enough oxygen to support life, aquatic life. The dead zone, a vast portion of the Gulf of Mexico seabed that loses most of its oxygen. It forms every summer, but this year it's especially large, 8,000 square miles, nearly as big as New Jersey. Scientists say the cause is hundreds of miles up the Mississippi. Farmers across the Midwest use tons of nitrogen and phosphorus to fertilize corn allowing them to satisfy growing demand from ethanol factories and developing countries. This summer's flooding caused much of the fertilizer to run off into rivers that flow into the Mississippi. The size of the low oxygen zone has increased in proportion to these nutrients reaching the Gulf. The fertilizer flowing into the Gulf triggers an overgrowth of microscopic algae. These things will fall to the bottom, and as they decompose, they consume oxygen. The lack of oxygen causes bottom dwellers, fish and shrimp, to swim away in search of oxygen. Clams, crabs, starfish and other slow-moving sea life suffocate. To find lots of shrimp, fishermen like Terry now have to travel far to the edge of the dead zone, an expensive proposition with the cost of diesel fuel still high. So many boats are idle, others are staying away from their home port in Grand Isle, Louisiana. A disaster for seafood processor Dean Blanchard, who buys shrimp from fishermen. You know, all my boats had to go somewhere else to try to make a living. It's a shame, you know. This, this is the prime shrimping ground in the country right here. And, and it, it shut us down. It just shut us down. It's unreal. With demand for corn growing, experts say the dead zone could expand in coming years, an environmental hazard that threatens Louisiana's seafood industry. 
Alan Chernoff, CNN, in the Gulf of Mexico.